Maybe you have watched the movie The Unbreakable with Bruce Willis. It is a pseudo superhero movie about a man who was the sole survivor of a catastrophic train crash. But that's nothing. There are people out there who survived far worse odds multiple times. Apparently, there was one guy in Japan which was a atomic bomb proof. His name was Tsutomu and he lived in Nagasaki, a city which most of us know was flattened in 1945. Tsutomu worked for Mitsubishi Heavy Industries as engineering technician. In the summer of 1945, he went for a three-month trip to Hiroshima. Before he was able to leave the city, it was bombed by Americans. Tsutomu was only 3 kilometers or 1.9 miles away from the center of the city. He also saw a bright flash of light and was knocked off his feet, got his ears ruptured, was temporarily blinded, got irradiated and received some serious burns, but he survived. He also survived with some of his work buddies and returned to Nagasaki. The return was not easy, Hiroshima was in ruins. He had to go through the rubble, swim through a river filled with floating bodies, then take a train to Nagasaki and Nagasaki keep in mind is far away, around 400 kilometers or 250 miles. Ok, he managed to reach his home city, all beaten up and all, but he got his wounds treated and went back to work, now that's a true Japanese spirit. I am healthy and I still have trouble getting out of bed. Anyway, the injured Tsutomu went back to work in Nagasaki and was trying to convince his boss that there was this huge explosion caused by a single event. But of course, Superior called him mad and claimed that there is just no such thing. Soon he was unfortunately proven wrong and once again a powerful flash lit the surroundings. This time Tsutomu knew what was about to happen and dropped to the ground just before the shockwave shattered the office windows. His bandages were blown off and he once again was exposed to dangerous amounts of radiation. He survived the blast, however this time radiation was a bit too great even for this man. His hair started falling, his arms turned gangrenous and he began vomiting profusely. But unlike most of people, he recovered and lived up until 96 years of age. It is said that 160 people experienced both blasts, but Japan only acknowledges officially Tsutomu as a survival of both events. Not only this man survived Japanese work camps which were notoriously brutal, but he also survived a sinking ship and nuclear bomb. During World War II he was serving in Allied base which was in a Singapore fort. They were preparing for Japanese invasion, but still fell and were taken to work on a Burma Siam railway. A railway of death, if I may add, because over 100,000 people including captives died on this project. When this railway was completed, prisoners including Alistair were put on ships to Japan. The ship was also horrid, prisoners endured illness, dehydration and instances of cannibalism. Good news though, the ship was later noticed by allied military vessel USS Pampanito. Not so good news was that it shot a torpedo. Japanese ship was sinking and Alistair somehow escaped and was floating on a raft in the middle of ocean for 5 days. 5 days of no food, no water. Not sure how that's even possible. Good news that after those 5 days he was rescued but sadly it was Japanese whaling ship so the guy was once again sent to work camp which was 16 kilometers or 10 miles from a peculiar city. Nagasaki. When the bomb dropped he was knocked from his feet but survived. What is interesting though, according to Alistair there was a directive given to Japanese soldiers they were to kill all prisoners in August 12 which was 3 days after the explosion. So these bombs probably saved him. Basically he survived extremely hard work conditions which killed thousands of people, he survived cannibal ship and its sinking, survived extreme dehydration, then a nuclear bomb and a scary order to deal with prisoners. Before I begin about sea survivors, keep in mind that this section is quite big, since there are quite few incredible cases. People of all times were believing that woman on board of ship is a disaster and a bad omen. 
Well, it kind of was when it came to Violet Yesop. Of course, she had nothing to do with the ship disasters, but she did encounter three in total, so the odds are stacked against her. First dangerous incident happened in the first ship she worked which was called RMS Olympic. For those who don't know, there were sister ships that looked like Titanics. One of those was Olympic. Well, in 1911, while she was working on Olympic, this ship collided with a British warship. Thankfully, Olympic somehow survived and managed to crawl back to the dock. Since this Olympic ship was out of commission, Violet Yesop was transferred to other, much safer sister ship called Titanic. And we all know what happened to that one. Just four days later after the transfer, Titanic collided with an iceberg. Violet, however, was able to find some spot in a lifeboat which helped her with her survival stuff. Okay, she survived. Two sister ships are out of commission. Olympic was in the docks being repaired and Titanic was at the bottom of the ocean. But wait, there's more sister ships. The only which was left was named HMHS Britannic. This ship was like the Titanic, however, due to World War I, it was converted into a floating hospital. So Violet, which was a nurse, was signed to work in this ship. HMHS Britannic was sailing in Aegean Sea, so icebergs are out of question. But that doesn't matter, the ship swam on a German naval mine and began sinking. Violet's lifeboat was sucked in by ship's propellers and she would have died. However, her dress caught in it and she was flung away from the propeller. Finally, ships gave up on trying to sink with Violet and she continued her work on other vessels for many years. Violet survived two real sinkings and a one close call. Okay, there was this man named Venman Weigham Musgrave. Quite a ominous name and rightfully so. Unlike Violet Yasov, which had her misfortune spread throughout the years, Musgrave was unable to die three times in the same day. Not only the same day, but the same hour. During World War I he was serving as a lower rank officer on a British warship called HMS Aboukir. On morning of 22 September 1914, this warship, together with two similar looking ships, were on patrol. Suddenly, a German U-boat shot a torpedo at HMS Aboukir and it started sinking. Venman went overboard and swam as fast as he could to reach friendly Hawk ship, but that one also got torpedoed and Venman jumped again into the water. Keep in mind that sinking vessels are very dangerous and can easily pull people into the depths, so sailors have to get away from them as fast as possible. But Venman Musgrave was not the man to surrender. Finally he swam to the third friendly ship called Cressy. But as soon as he arrived, it was torpedoed also. Guess what? Well, he jumped into the sea for the third time. Thankfully, Venman found himself some driftwood and was later found by a Dutch fishing vessel which, strangely, was not torpedoed. Venman survived three sinkings and was miraculously found alive in not-so-warm North Sea. But these unsinkable people don't come even close to Arthur John Priest. This mad lad survived four ship sinkings and two collisions. He also worked deep inside the ship, close to boilers, so the chance to escape was even lower. His sinking career was very similar to Violet's, they both survived the same collision between RMS Olympic and HMS Hawk. They also both survived sinking of Titanic and sinking of HMHS Britannic, the one which uh, was hit by German mine. Arthur also survived torpedoed SS Donegal and HMS Alcantara, which was sunk during the ship battle. After his insane luck, or should I say misfortune, he unlike Violet retired from the seas and said that nobody wanted to sail with him after the disasters. Also, this list is about humans, but I have to mention unsinkable cat Sam, which served the German Nazis in quite a famous ship called Bismarck. Cat obviously didn't operate any cannons. It was working as a pest control officer. 
Anyway, during an evil battle Bismarck was sunk, but the cat managed to find an escape and jumped on a floating board. Thankfully, British destroyer HMS Kozak found the unfortunate cat. But sadly, later this Kozak ship was blown by torpedo and over a hundred of people died. But not Sam. This ship didn't sink though, it was able to return to the shores. Later, Sam was transferred to HMS Ark Royal, which was torpedoed and sunk, but Sam together with some of the crew was found clinging to a floating board. It was noted that the cat was quite angry, but looked quite okay. Later poor Sob was transferred again to a ship called HMS Lightning, which was also sunk. Sam survived again, and this time was sent to live in England. It is said that Sam's stories may be untrue, and there could have been a different cat stories mixed together into one big legend. I don't know what this guy did to Zeus, but apparently Roy Sullivan all his life was being hunted by lightnings. He was working as a park ranger in Shenandoah National Park in Virginia, so I guess being outdoors for long periods of time increases the chances. Ordinary people have just 1 in 15,000 of chance of being hit by lightning in their lifetime. Roy Sullivan was struck by lightning not one, not two, but seven times. First time he was hit was in 1942. He was hiding from the thunderstorm in the fire lookout tower. However, many lightnings hit this tower, and it was set on fire, so Roy had to run outside, thus he was hit by the lightning. After being lightning free for more than 27 years, Zeus or Thor remembered unfinished depths and noticed that Roy was having a good day. So a lightning struck a nearby tree while Roy was driving an actual car which in normal circumstances would protect passengers from lightning. However, not only the lightning reflected off the tree, but it also struck through the open window in the vehicle, hitting Roy directly. The poor man lost his consciousness and his hair was set on fire, but thankfully car came in hold peacefully. Three years later, while he was in his backyard, lightning struck a transformer, then once again deflected and hit Roy. After the fourth time that he was struck in his ranger cabin, he was now fully believing that some unknown force was after him, so Roy was carrying a can of water to put out future fires on his head. The fifth time was quite weird, he noticed a storm cloud approaching. So he got into his car and started driving from it. Roy noticed that the cloud was almost following him. After he ran away and felt like it was safe to go outside his truck, he was once again struck by lightning. Sullivan crawled to his truck and poured the same can of water over his head because it was once again on fire. At this point I would sacrifice a lamb for the thunder gods. Anyway, Roy was struck two more times and the last one happened while he was fishing. A random bear appeared and was also trying to steal a trout fish from the defeated man, but the dude, while his hair was on fire, hit the bear with a stick, successfully warning off the beast. Even Roy's wife once was struck by lightning while Roy was close to her in the yard. Someone tried doing statistics on this and they worked out a number which is 1 out of 10 octillion. I read somewhere that later even his grave was struck by lightning, but that might be just a myth. The reason why I placed Franos a lot higher than Roy the lightning guy is that Franos survived different kind of dangers. I'm not sure how legit his claims are, but many people seem to believe it. Basically this guy's final destination POV started in 1957, when a bus that he was on started swerving left and right. It eventually went into a river, but Frano and the bus driver managed to escape almost without any injuries. Five years later, maybe a bit weary of buses, Frano went on a train. However, it was derailed by a rogue boulder which fell on the tracks. Once again, Frano together with the vehicle went into the river. He managed to break the window and rescue his friend, but 17 passengers died. Just one year later, Frano had probably the most miraculous survival when he got himself into a plane which suffered a technical malfunction and started losing attitude. Finally, it crashed into a boulder. 
not the same that uh, derailed the train though. But because Freno was sitting in the back of the plane, he and the flight attendant were sucked out of the plane through a door which opened for some reason. So, they were both falling from the height of 800 meters or 2600 feet. Normally, people die when they fall from such heights. But not Frano, who together with flight attendant fell directly into a pile of hay. Anyway, three other close calls happened when he was in a car. Two times he almost got engulfed by flames. He also was hit by a bus, but survived. Finally, in a mountain road, he had to swerve with his car to avoid truck and eventually went through the rails into 100 meters deep ravine. Somehow, since Frano never put seatbelt on, he was able to quickly jump out of the car and cling onto a tree on a slope right before vehicle tipped over and crashed. All bad luck finally ended when Frano won a substantial sum of money in lottery. Imagine a soldier that has a nickname, the unkillable soldier. This is the guy, of course he has a badass eye patch. He served and survived three wars, Boer War, World War I and World War II. Some people died in just first few minutes of action and this guy survived three major wars. He was shot 11 times in the face, leg, stomach, skull, ankle, hip, ear, elbow, groin, hand and eye. So he had to wear eye patch. One time in the first world war he got quite injured and demanded that his fingers be amputated. But the doctor refused, so Adrian pulled his own fingers away from his hand. Not sure if he did this to avoid his hand getting a gangrene, but it still did get just that, so it was later removed anyway. Basically the guy looked like a pirate. When Poland was invaded by Germans and Soviets, he was escaping the country with his car convoy, but it was attacked. But he obviously survived. Then he caught a flight just in time to escape Romania before it was overrun by his enemies. During his life Adrian survived his army base being heavily bombed and also enemy fire on a plane where he was a passenger. During World War II he was flying to negotiate with the Yugoslavian government, but his plane magically lost both engines and the plane crash landed in the sea about 1.6 or 1 mile from the land. Keep in mind, this guy was a bit old now, around 60, but he didn't give a damn and swam the whole way. He and some of his men were captured by Italians and placed in a prison. Did he stay here and did nothing? No, he and his mates started digging a secret tunnel. It took them 7 months and they escaped successfully. The dude disguised himself as an Italian peasant, but it was quite a hard thing to do since he had an eye patch, no hand, trillion scars and couldn't speak Italian. He was recaptured just a week later, I kid you not, instead of dumping this legend into a prison camp, he was taken to Rome to serve as the guy who could secretly negotiate a peace deal with Britain. He was given a nice suit, was escorted to Portugal and finally he was back in UK. So, to summarize the guy, he survived three major wars, countless of battles, 11 shots, numerous other injuries, two plane crashes, bombardment and he also escaped prison. Oh, also when he was in China, he criticized Mao Zedong to his face. When he was describing his time in war, he wrote, frankly, I had enjoyed the war.